Hello and welcome to this quick tip. This is a quick tip about using compasses on fixed wing craft. Now, for those of you that are watching at the moment, this will be something that you'll recognize. This is an omnibus flight controller running Ardu Pilot. And I'm just in the moment of putting some cool stuff in it, which is actually gonna allow you to have uh, essentially like a mini mission planner on your radio. So stay tuned for that and make sure that you're subscribed to the playlist. But one of the things in the last video that I did, uh, I got a lot of comments on, was about the use of a compass in a model like that. Now, the GPS that's actually in here, the little external GPS that's that, uh, not only is giving GPS positional information, but it's also got a compass that is giving heading information, so it knows the direction that the wing is pointing. Now, I have enabled the compass as part of this build, because every time I build a fixed wing with RD Pilot, I always do. But in some of the other builds that I've done with iNav and things with the uh, Vector from Eagle Tree, I'll put links to all of these uh, series down in, in the description below, because I've kind of shown how I'll do it. I've disabled the compass in everything else apart from Ardu Pilot builds. And why is that? Because actually in Ardu Pilot, you can also disable the compass as well. And lots of people were coming on saying, oh, don't use the compass, it's really hard to set up. Um, the answer to that, and the reason that lots of people are saying that, is that the compass is going to be affected by any kind of magnetic field. And that's either going to be directly from any large magnets on the model, but also from strong electromagnetic fields coming from the power system. So if you put it near uh, cables that are pulling a lot of amperage, then the current that, that's flowing along those wires will actually also create a magnetic field that can potentially deflect it as well. And that's why it's always a little bit tricky and why there's this option to disable it in these options and flight control software. But there is a little bit of a drawback with that. And you need to be aware of that to figure out whether or not it's worthwhile persevering and doing like we did in the last build, actually finding a place on the model that is free from magnetic interference so you can mount and use a compass or whether you're just going to disable the compass and use the GPS. Because if you don't have a compass enabled so that or a magnetometer, as you'll see it referred to in the software, it doesn't know the heading that it's flying along but what it can do is quite a clever trick. And let me show you what that trick is. So here we are flying along in our little black wing and moment to moment we can fly along and the flight controller is knowing the GPS position quite accurately for each of the locations and is constantly monitoring it. Now the really cool thing is if you draw a line between those two positions, then that is the heading of the fixed wing. And the reason that you can do this on a fixed wing is because it should always be flying forward. The front of the craft is always the front of the craft. Whereas things like a multi-rotor, it can fly in any orientation, backwards, front, left, right, whatever. So the fact that we have this little shortcut in a flight controller in a fixed wing means that we have this little trick. So what you can do is as you're flying around, it'll actually calculate the heading moment to moment and it will give you a pretty good idea of the direction you're heading in. In fact, if you look at some of the other videos, series that I've done, things like the iNav builds and things like the Eagle Tree Vector builds, you'll notice when you power up the uh, the rosette at the top of the on-screen display that shows you the, the heading, you know, north, east, south, west. It's like on a little um, on, on screen display thing at the top. Uh, it'll be a bit arbitrary when you first power it up. The flight controller will usually assume the direction it's in is north. You'll see it move because it will affect that by sensing the movement of the fixed wing model. So it will just update the rosette at the top and try and update the heading. But it's only when you actually throw it for the first time and you get a GPS position from moment to moment that it'll suddenly swing round and it will give you your heading. And that is part of the problem is that you too need two positions to calculate the heading. And that's not an issue normally because you'll be flying, right? So that's going to work fine. But there are a couple of instances where that's not going to work very well indeed. So let's go back to our little wing again. But this time we're not flying on a calm day. This time we're flying on a really windy day. So rather than flying a straight line, it's actually being pushed along. Now this time, if the flight controller calculates the heading, it's not going to be the actual heading. It's actually going to be off slightly because the direction that the plane is pointing in and the direction that the plane is flying in as calculated from the GPS position are now different. 
it's even worse if we look at the same situation in the wing where it's flying into really windy conditions. If the wind is gusting at 30, 40 miles an hour and your fixed wing is only flying at 20 miles an hour, it's effectively going to be flying backwards. In that situation, the calculated heading is going to be way off from the actual heading of the craft. So there are a couple of instances where the use of a compass is a really good idea. The use of a compass in a model that you're going to use for any kind of surveying or mapping, I would say is absolutely crucial. Adding things like a pitot tube, which will be able to detect airspeed and be able to be used with a GPS location, heading information and wind and airspeed can help the flight controller make sure that it's flying okay and take account of those conditions where it's flying into a headwind. But if you're not interested in that and you're not expecting to fly in situations with very high winds, then disabling the compass and just using the GPS positions are going to be absolutely fine. In fact, for me, I never fly with a compass enabled on iNav and Eagle Tree Vector. And later in the series, we'll probably turn the compass off on here. It's relatively easy to do in Arduino Pilot and we'll see how it performs. But hopefully that's helpful for those of you that have seen that and are kind of confused about why you'd use a compass and why you wouldn't. General flying, not using a compass is probably going to be absolutely fine. If you're going to be flying in high winds or want to do surveying or mapping, then I would absolutely recommend taking the extra steps to find somewhere on the model that compass will work well. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.